Discouragement is a no-entry road. And follow God's traffic rules. When you see the road discouragement, there's a sign there that says, only one way. That means you can come out of there, but you can't go in there. Okay? Discouragement, condemning yourself. These are all roads which are no entry. You're not supposed to go in. You can come out of there. Only one way. Why? Because when you get discouraged, it's the first step to another failure. Definite. I, you know, in my younger days, I wish somebody had told me this. I found, I slip up and fall somewhere as a believer, and I'd get so discouraged, and then the devil would say, what does it matter? You've already fallen. You might as well fall a second time. And I'd fall a second time. It took me years to discover this was a very clever trick of the devil. He'd get me discouraged over my first failure, and then I'd fall a second time. Now, if I had not got discouraged over my first failure, at least I would have fallen only once, not a second time. And you notice that in your life? When, God, when the devil makes you discouraged about anything, maybe your exam results that came yesterday or whatever it is. But see, some of you are encouraged because of the exam results that came yesterday. Do you, feel how, do you see how you can get a little victory over sin today? Example. How encouragement really helps you. So don't allow the devil to discourage you, ever. Nothing is serious except sin. Even your exam results are not serious. Not at all. I don't know whether Peter ever came first in his class. I don't think so. I think my guess is that Peter came pretty close to the bottom of the class, but he didn't get discouraged. I mean, he did once upon a time when he failed the Lord so badly, he said, I'm going back to my fishing, but the Lord called him right back. And I want to say to you, it doesn't matter even if you have denied the Lord three times like Peter. Don't get discouraged. The Lord has a plan and a ministry for you. No matter where you are, no matter how much you have failed, no matter how much you have sunk, even when you hit rock bottom, don't get discouraged. While there's light, there's hope. And no matter even if you have fallen more than anybody else, you say, I will not get discouraged. I am going to still make it. I'm going to, even if you're running a marathon race and you've already fallen a hundred times, that's fine. I'm still going to run. I'm going to run as if I'm going to win. And you'll be amazed what God does through you. The Bible is full of examples of its great men who failed many times. Abraham told lies more than once. He didn't learn a lesson the first time. He went and told a lie a second time. And many other mistakes he made. And... Um, a lot of other people made mistakes. Moses made mistakes. Paul made mistakes. David made mistakes. But God still used them. But if they got discouraged and say, oh, well, there's no hope for me, then they'd have wasted the rest of their lives. So you must determine in your life that by the grace of God, you will never get discouraged, no matter how much you have failed or how deeply you have failed, even if everything goes wrong around you, you're going to have hope. And God is still almighty. He'll do something for me. And you know, if you live like that, you can be a tremendous encouragement to other people. And don't ever look back over decisions you made in the past. This is a great way in which the devil discourages people. He reminds you of some decision you took two years ago. Say, oh, if I had not taken this job, or if I had not moved to this place, or if I had not done this thing, or if I had not married this person. You keep on thinking like that. Do you feel full of the joy of the Lord when you think like that? No. That itself shows it's the devil who tells you, and he keeps on adding to the list. And then just think of this other thing you did, and if you hadn't done this, and you hadn't done this, and you hadn't done this. You know, there's a sense in which all of us have to say we get more wisdom. As we go forward, we look back, and we say, yeah, I could have done that better. But that only shows that we are growing. You see, for example, if I look back over something I did five years ago, and I say, I have no regret over that, that means I'm not growing. I'll tell you honestly, I have regret over things I did last year, which proves that I'm growing. 
and next year I'll have some regret over the things I did this year. Hopefully, if I'm growing. So when you have regret over something you did in the past, it only means you're growing spiritually. I can do it better now. Sure, I can do it better. So what are we going to do? Get discouraged over something we did 20 years ago? I remember when we started our church 30 years ago in my home. I was a stupid young man of 35 years old. I mean, not the type of person who was a wise person. And the number of stupid things I did, perhaps only Brother Ian knows fully. The rest of you don't know, thankfully. But I'll tell you this. I did a lot of stupid things. But I don't live my life in regret over them. No. I said a lot of stupid things, did a lot of stupid things. But I tried to learn from them. And I'll tell you another thing to encourage you. I did not learn by one doing it once wrong. Sometimes some things I did three, four times wrong before I learned it, and even more than that. But gradually I said, Lord, I want to learn something from my mistakes. Even if I did it twenty times, okay, I did it, I won't get discouraged. I did the same stupid thing twenty times, but I'm going to learn something. And I learned it. So don't get discouraged by any failure in your life. 